This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. In the Windows Server 2012 R2 Hyper-V Training Virtualization Basics, we created a very basic standalone host. In this training, we're going to create a little bit more advanced standalone host because we're going to use NIC teaming in order to create some redundancy with our network. So here's our standalone host. It's going to call, be called PHX Hyper-V01. It's a Windows Server 2012 R2 server with the Hyper-V role. And we're going to have a domain controller. So we're going to make this host part of a domain. And here we have two network connections that we're going to team and give an IP address. And then over here we have two network connections, our two NICs that we're going to team and we're going to use for our virtual switch. So that those are going to be what our virtual machines use to communicate with external clients. What this teaming does is it allows us to use multiple NICs and have them look like one NIC. So this gives us redundancy and it also gives us added throughput because both of these NICs can be active. So when we create this team here, for example, that's going to have the IP address of our Hyper-V host, we're going to use two NICs. And if one NIC went down, so maybe bad card or just the port on the back of the, this server went down or got unplugged or something, our clients would still be able to contact this Hyper-V host on this IP address because this NIC would still be up and running. So if we just had one NIC before and that NIC went bad or got unplugged or something like that, then we wouldn't be able to contact this Hyper-V host and this also this Hyper-V host wouldn't be able to talk out on our network. Same goes with the physical NIC on the back of the server here that we use for our virtual switch. So when our virtual machines connect to our virtual switch with their virtual NICs and they talk out on the network to external clients, if we just had one network card that we were using and that NIC went bad or got unplugged, then all those virtual machines would not be able to communicate out on our external network. But with teaming, we're going to use two NICs for our virtual switch and they look like one NIC. It actually creates a logical NIC that will C and we configure just like we would a physical NIC. And NIC stands for Network Interface Card. If we look at the back of the server here, so this is the back of our Hyper-V host, we can see we've got one NIC here, another one right here, another one right here, and another one right here. So two onboard NICs that are connected to the motherboard and also one PCIe card that is a dual port. And what we're actually going to do, as we'll see, we're going to create some extra redundancy. So imagine if we used this NIC and this NIC for this team. So the team that has our IP address of our Hyper-V host. Well, let's say this PCIe card went bad then. Well, it wouldn't matter because, or excuse me, it wouldn't matter that we teamed them because both of these NICs would have gone down because this whole PCIe card went bad. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to use this NIC and this NIC for one of our teams and this NIC and this NIC for the other team. What this does is this gives us PCIe card redundancy. So if this PCIe card goes bad, then we still have one half of the team on this NIC and the other half of the other team on this NIC. So we're still up and running. Also, when we create our standalone host, we're going to most likely store the virtual machine files and the virtual disks on the disks that are internal to this server. So if we look at the front of this server, we're going to store the files on these disks. And we want to have some redundancy there, so we're going to configure the RAID on these disks. We also probably want some separation between the disks that are used for the operating system, which is Windows Server 2012 R2, and the virtual machines. So we're going to create a couple RAID arrays so that we actually separate that I.O. So in this environment, this is a pretty small environment. We only have one switch we're working with that might look something like this. Here's an example of a switch that we might be connecting uh, with Ethernet cables from the back of our server to our switch. 
But you'll notice uh, we have still single points of failure. What if this switch went bad? Well, then all of our servers that are connected to it would now not be able to communicate with each other. All of our virtual machines that are on this host wouldn't be able to communicate with anything else that's external to this host. Well, we can actually add another switch in a little bit larger environment and create even more redundancy. So in this example, now we have two switches that have two connections between them, so we've got some redundancy there. We could also team our domain controller. And down here you can see, instead of connecting both parts of the team to the same switch, we're actually separating them. So this team, that's going to be have the IP address of our server, is connected to this switch, and the other NIC is connected to this switch, and this team over here that's going to be for our virtual switch is connected to this switch, and this NIC is connected to this switch. So if this switch went down, this switch would still be up, and everything would still be functioning because half of this team is connected to it, half of this team is connected to this switch, and the domain controller would also be connected to this switch. So we can do that with teaming, and it's all built into Windows Server 2012 R2. So the goal here is really to eliminate our single points of failure because with virtualization, we're ha adding a lot of virtual machines to one physical machine, especially in a standalone uh, host, and that means added risk. So if something goes wrong with this server, not only does this server go down, all the virtual machines on it go down, which normally causes a much bigger deal or a much bigger problem than if we just had one operating system on this server and that was it. So we're reducing our risk by eliminating single points of failure.